Hello, everyone, and welcome to this live stream. Uh, we're having a, let me just change my microphone so I have something a little bit better. There we are. Uh, of course, we're having some uh, slight technical issues here, but uh, it's great to be with you uh, here as well to this. And we have some exciting news to talk about. We have uh, a new integration that's really kind of a little bit of a, of a game changer in what we have here at GitGuardian. We're teaming up with the lads at CyberArk, with the people at CyberArk, uh, uh, to be able to to be able to do this. So anyway, uh, what I would like to do is, Dan, I'm going to invite to the stage uh, some of the people from GitGuardian to maybe give a brief understanding about some of the core problems around this and why we've done this. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to invite Daniel uh, to uh, introduce himself for a minute, his role at GitGuardian, and maybe tell a little bit of a sneak peek uh, of what's coming up in this, uh, in this webinar. All right, hello everyone. Um, Matt, can you advance a couple of slides here? Then I'll get into it. There we go, perfect. So my name is Daniel and I am the uh, government solutions lead here at GitGuardian. Uh, but before that, I have been working as a code security advisor at the company for the last going on three years. So before we get into the new integration and how we're working with CyberArk uh, to improve the secure secrets management lifecycle, I wanted to touch a bit on who we are, what GitGuardian does, um, and why we've started this partnership and how we started to this conversation in the first place. So going back several years, GitGuardian has been around since 2017. And when we were founded back then, we were focused on scanning public facing github.com for exposed secrets. Um, we ingest every single commit that hits public GitHub, and we were scanning to find secrets that developers were leaving in their publicly visible code, uh, starting in their personal repos, corporate repos, anywhere on public facing GitHub. So we quickly realized that one, somewhat contrary to our expectations, the majority of secrets that were leaked on public facing GitHub that belonged to companies were actually being leaked in developers' personal repositories. So we realized that there's a strange scenario here where developers are pushing internal, official, professional corporate code into their personal repositories. And very often that code contains secrets. So we continue monitoring public facing GitHub. Uh, and over the years, we have seen that this problem has augmented year on year. So here you can see some figures from our last report on what we call the states of secret sprawl. This is an annual report analyzing data and trends that we see in secrets leaked on public facing GitHub. Uh, this year's edition should be coming out uh, within several months, I believe. But over the past year, we see that the problem of secrets exposed in code has increased um, exponentially more than the number of commits on GitHub. So if you look here on the top right box, we can see that the total volume of commits, the volume of code that we see hitting public GitHub increased 20% year on year but the volume of secrets exposed in that code increased 67%. And this is very much in line with what we, we've been seeing since 2017 when we started this project. We've seen the relative number of secrets in code hitting public GitHub has increased uh, every year um, over time. So this is a problem that seems to be getting worse and worse. Um, and as we started diving deeper into the problem, we were considering, okay, so developers are leaking internal corporate code with secrets to their personal repos, sometimes also an official uh, official repos belonging to the organization. What's the real problem here? So we realized that actually the core problem, even if the outcome that we were observing was secrets and internal code being leaked on public GitHub, the real problem is secrets being in code in the first place. So there's a larger problem around secrets being hard coded internally and in internal repos that some portion of that code might end up on public GitHub. That code might contain secrets. That's really the worst case scenario. But the root cause, the core problem is those secrets being in internal code in the first place. So we then turn to looking at internal code and scanning and monitoring internal repositories for hard coded secrets and providing security and development teams with the tools to remediate that. Uh, and in general, we found that indeed 
the number of secrets we find on a given organization's public facing GitHub perimeter is typically three to four times worse. That is to say there are three to four times as many secrets exposed in internal repositories as we typically find uh, in their public facing GitHub perimeter. So that really is the core problem. Um, and that was the next step that we turned to focus on. Uh, Mac, if you could advance to the next slide, please. So there's a number of reasons for this, for this issue of secrets being present in internal repos. One is that companies often are using secrets managers, which is great. We have to provide developers with a way to handle and manage secrets correctly. But the one constant insecurity is human error. There will always be human error. There will always be individuals who are not keeping track of what they're doing. Maybe you're trying to find ways around guardrails as a temporary fix and forget about that. But there's always going to be some element, some edge case where that secrets manager, something like CyberArk, uh, or even just an ENV file, some you know secure way of handling secrets, isn't being used correctly. There's always an edge case where secrets are going to end up in code due to human error. Um, and that ed edge case is what's leading to the problem that we're observing and led us to developing the solution, uh, allowing organizations to identify when that edge case occurs. We have the way of managing secrets correctly, but we have to find a way of identifying when they're not being used correctly, how to address that and how to reinforce internal processes to eliminate that as much as possible and ensure that something like CyberArk is being used the majority of the time. So that moves us to challenge number two, which is sort of a follow on of the human error occurs, but it's because developers in the process of development have a tendency to expose secrets in a number of places throughout their development environments and collaboration environments. Um, this is rarely, if ever, malicious. It usually is just because developers have a ton of things to focus on, a very, very difficult job with an insane amount of moving parts that's very difficult for any person to keep track of. So sometimes the easiest shortcut is just to include that secret in code for the moment with the intention of removing it later on or you know using cyber arc to handle that secret later on but then we get distracted move to something else we forget it's there perhaps it's removed down the road but they forget that it's in the git history uh, maybe they've shared it in something like slack or mattermost or gyra um, so there's a tendency for these secrets to be exposed throughout the entire development environments and once they're there it's very hard to maintain visibility on everywhere they've been exposed um, and how they might have spread throughout the organization unless you're implementing some kind of an enterprise grade scanning solution like Git Guardian to identify all the places these secrets are. Um, and that moves us to challenge number three is it's good to find where secrets are exposed within your internal environments, but that's only half the battle. Finding them is good, but once you have them, so what? You have to have a way to remediate them. So for an average organization of 400 uh, developers, we typically find in the neighborhood of 1,000 to 1,100 secrets exposed in their internal repositories. That's a massive amount of work for people to go through and revoke and remediate all those secrets. If we have a security team that's handling this centrally, they have a thousand other things to do. They can't be doing all that. Um, so we've developed an approach that is decentralized, allows development and security teams to work in collaboration and for the remediation process to be developer driven that no, not only allows this problem to be addressed effectively at scale, uh, but also helps to reinforce the best practices. Remember that we shouldn't be including secrets in code and remind people that, hey, we need to be using solutions like CyberArk to manage secrets correctly and baking that into the remediation process. Next slide, please. So this is just, again, going over exactly what we've come to, starting from that public facing GitHub monitoring. We've moved our focus now, although we do still continue to maintain public GitHub, and I'll come back to that in a second. Um, we've moved to having a focus on scanning the internal environment, uh, identifying where secrets are in those internal environments, starting in source code management systems, GitHub, GitLab, Bitbucket, and Azure repos, but also developer collaboration tools. Um, we've added Slack and gyrus scanning and others to come in the next several months. So we're really looking at identifying ever in developer collaboration environments that secrets may have been exposed centralizing them in a dashboard so you can see everywhere that they are present, apply some smart automations and contextualization to that. So things like automation rules of severity, if a secret is of a certain type, and is of certain repos that you have flagged as particularly sensitive and are confirmed to still be valid, for example, we can automatically say, hey, that is a critical severity. We need that to be addressed immediately. And so if you do have thousands of secrets that you need to be to have remediated, um, we give you the tools to help break that down into manageable chunks and address the problem uh, effectively at scale 
in as little time and with as little effort as possible. And again, that is the only fashion to do that at scale uh, is to have developer driven remediation and have a decentralized workflow that has development teams and security teams working in collaboration for a shared security model. So going back to, as I said, although we do a lot of internal monitoring now, we are still focusing on public facing GitHub. We still ingest every commit that hits public facing GitHub and scan it for secrets. So we have a very large database of all the secrets that have been leaked on public GitHub going back to 2017, even a little bit prior. So we realize that this is a, a very useful source of information of secrets, leaks and trends uh, across the entire industry landscape because GitHub is the number one place for developers to do code sharing. So we developed recently a new tool called Has My Secret Leaked. So essentially we've taken that large database of leaked secrets on public GitHub. I was muted there. So uh, we have a database of all the secrets that have been leaked on public facing GitHub. We hash those and the Has My Secret Leak service allows you to take one of your internal secrets, hash that secret, and then compare it to our database of hashes. And if those hashes match, then your secret that's internal uh, perhaps managed in CyberArk, as we'll get to in a second, has been leaked from public face to GitHub. You know it's out there in the wild and it needs to be revoked and rotated immediately. So this is kind of closing the loop between the public uh, facing GitHub monitoring and the internal repos monitoring and developing a full life cycle of looking at secrets that are exposed interni internally, exposed publicly and managed correctly or not, and having all those things come together to have the entire secrets management life cycle uh, done as securely and efficiently as possible. Next slide, I believe it's, yeah, any any questions from the crowd now before we turn it over to uh, CyberArk to describe their angle? Here we are. So um, just a, a quick uh, a quick rundown for everyone too is um, if you have uh, specific questions, you can ask them at any time. There's a questions tab uh, going down there at the bottom that you can, you can go to. But here's a couple of questions. Uh, Well, uh, so any of our secrets being being stored in our database? I'm not uh, quite sure uh, exactly what's meant by that, but I think, I think most people. Are... I think that might be referring to the the public facing GitHub leaks. Mm -hmm. you could confirm that, uh, Venkata. Well, here's an interesting question that we have, Daniel, under the questions is why doesn't GitHub provide direct access uh, to Git, Git, Git Guardian? And, uh, and, I, and there's an interesting thing to this is that a Git Guardian, uh, GitHub actually has a public API. And so you can, you can go to uh, api.github.com forward slash events, and you can see all the activity that's happening on GitHub via that API. And anyone can access, access that. That's an interesting. That's, that's an interesting kind of a, a point there too about the the, the GitHub uh, information. Does uh, Git Guardian proactively question. scan publicly accessible GitHub repositories for potential exposure of sensitive information? Um, so yes, we do, uh, with the qualifier that the sensitive information there is secrets. We are scanning all publicly available GitHub repositories for secrets uh, in commits to those repositories. So what I wanted to do now is we actually have uh, another part of this. And it's been great because I wanted to give everyone a recap about what Git Guardian did. So Daniel, I think you did a fantastic job. Thanks for, thanks for sharing that. But one of the exciting things that we've recently done is we've teamed up uh, with CyberArk. So uh, I wanted to hand it over to the, to the team at CyberArk who have joined us uh, now to maybe give a brief introduction um, at exactly kind of what CyberArk does, and then later on, we're going to talk about what we're doing together and, and why that's important. But for the moment, I'm going to maybe uh, leave it over to the team at CyberArk to give a brief introduction as to uh, exactly uh, what's happening on, on that side. Great. Thanks for that. Can you guys hear me all right? Yes, Jody, we can hear you perfectly. Beautiful. All right. Yeah, so uh, we really appreciate the opportunity. We're excited about this uh, partnership and this integration. A little bit about CyberArk. We are the global leader in identity security. 
we are, are centered on privilege controls and provide the most comprehensive security offering for any identity, whether that's a human or a machine, you know, non-human. Um, and that spans across business applications, distributed workforces, hybrid cloud workloads, uh, and, and the DevOps lifecycle, the, the entire supply chain. So as these metrics are showing, I won't, I won't you know, insult you guys by reading it to you. Uh, the world's leading organizations trust CyberArk to, to secure their most critical assets. A little bit of history, we began more than 20 years ago by securing privileged human access. That's people that need root level, you know, root access, root passwords. And, and we did that by vaulting those credentials. So storing those credentials in a secure server, controlling access to those credentials, auditing that access, and rotating those on a regular basis. So that sort of established the, the foundation for privileged access. And then that naturally led to secrets management, which you know, came about with the rise of automation over the last decade or so, uh, securing that access for non-humans, for applications, DevOps tools, uh, and other processes. So because access is granted to identities, over the past half decade or so, we've shifted our focus more to identity security. And that is authenticating uh, an identity and granting it just enough access, just the appropriate level of access and it doesn't matter what type of identity it is. Our vision is that every identity be secured with the right level of privilege controls. Um, so if we go to the next slide, um, these, these access or the, these uh, identities really span uh, a spectrum. And this is kind of a heat map, if you will, of the kind of risk that these identities represent. So you can see on the left, uh, your, your average employee no root level access. You know they have uh, they have their their laptops or their workstations. They need access to certain things. This is kind of the domain of classic IAM, if you will. Um, IT the 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 system administrators um, they're uh, just just to the right of the workforce. That's that's sort of the classic cyber arc identity system administrators, uh, site reliability engineers, etc. Um, as you see with developers, um, the heat map starts getting kind of red. And this is because as developers are building new applications, building processes, and often uh, triaging applications in production, they have an elevated risk. Uh, and, and this, you know, I think uh, the folks at Git Guardian will agree, represents the opportunity uh, and, and is really the focus of the integration. As developers are building their code, uh, they may accidentally check in credentials to GitHub. Um, I will bet anybody a dollar uh, that writes code that they either have or will at some point check their credentials inadvertently into a version control system. Um, and so, so that it therein is, is, is the focus of this relationship uh, and and you know what this this uh, slide is really representing is we see that as the highest risk. And so when you start looking at you know our, our customers often ask us where should we start? You know where where we there's there's so much that needs to be done. Where should we start? Well, a good way to start is retiring the highest risk. And there's not, no no higher risk than a leaked credential. Um, so I think that's that really is is the opportunity. Now if we look at the next slide, the uh, the non-human identities in a in an organization uh, outnumber the human identities by at least a factor of fifty to one. Uh, our own research said it's about that. I believe it's probably higher and growing. It is a growing level of risk that these non-human identities and the processes by which they are developed and built uh, are, are are representing. And so these uh, these are just the types of the uh, the non-human workloads that CyberArk is in the business of securing, you know, classic on-prem operation or operational uh, applications, even older mainframes, applications running on mainframes in application servers, security scanners. Uh, these are these are all sort of classic IT uh, solutions. But then you can see over on the left, Kubernetes, uh, the cloud platforms, the uh, supply chain automation tools like Jenkins, Terraform, etc. You know, these are all uh, processes that that at some point will need to do something in an environment that requires a credential. 
that's where really what our secrets management business is focused on. Um, and, and we secure those credentials again by, by vaulting those credentials, controlling access to those credentials, rotating those credentials. And as you'll see, uh, that's, that's where the sort of one and one makes three combination of GitGuardian and CyberArk uh, really, really shines. Um, it is, it is, a, it is a, a, a beautiful symbiotic relationship. So if we look at that, uh, that next slide, that really kind of describes our motivation uh, for working with GitGuardian, and that is to uh, be proactive about this. You know, errors are going to happen. You know, it's, it's not a matter of if, but when a secret is going to be checked into a repository, how quickly can you respond to that? Can you prevent it in the first place? And if you can't prevent it, how quickly can you remediate that? So we want to detect those errors. We want to catch noncompliance. We want to establish best practices, but any problems that result from best practices not being followed, uh, we want to have a plan for that. And we want to give our customers that plan. And so that's the approach we've taken in part partnering with GitGuardian is, you know, they are the leader in detecting leaked credentials. I use GitGuardian. Um, I, I will just admit, I will say right here, GitGuardian has notified me of uh, a time that I've checked in my credentials. So I, I believe in GitGuardian. It's a, uh, it's, it's a great tool. And this integration, I think, uh, will, will be of great interest to our audience. So we appreciate the opportunity to, to co-present this with you guys. Um, and I think uh, you know, if there's any questions, we'd uh, you know, be glad to entertain them. Yeah, thanks for that there. Thanks for that, Jody. And and I, hopefully what you guys are all figuring out right now is that there that we're getting in as the, the the leader in detecting secrets in in lots of different places, um, but including public places and GitHub. And CyberArk is the leader in identity. And I think when you put those two together, you're able to do some really powerful things. There's a question in here that uh, someone asked. I said, is there kind of a one-click solution to solve problem of leaked, leaked secrets and things. And we're a long way from ever being having a complete one-click solution for, I think, I think, for anything in security. But what we're going to present and what we're able to do with uh, CyberArk and GitGuardian together, I think it's as close as we can get to that because we're teaming up with the ability to be able to detect when a secret leaks with the tool that is able to protect those secrets and reissue them. So that's really what we're what we're talking about. So what I want to do is I want to invite uh, uh, the next speaker here, which is Pierre, to come on and talk a little bit about uh, how GitGuardian and CyberArk are going to be working together on that. So Pierre, uh, if you could appear on the stage, uh, I look forward to it. Hi everyone, uh, can you hear me correctly? Cool. Yes, we can. We can hear you. We can't see you though. If you could. Okay, yeah. Turn your. So yeah, let's try to dive <laughs> yeah. a bit deeper into um, how this integration works. Um, can you go to the next slide, please, uh, Mac? So um, here, he, let, let's try to summarize first the, the problem we we want to to solve here. So as Daniel said uh, before, so the human error remains even if you are using a secret manager. At some point, uh, a developer can bypass the rule, can hard code credentials, and uh, yeah, the human error remains uh, a risk uh, for leaking secrets. On the other hand, um, if you have only uh, the ability to detect secrets, you still need to remediate the incident, and you and, and you need to uh, push your developers towards uh, best practices, secure practices and to use Secrets Manager to vault their secrets, to rotate them. And, and that's another uh, part of the problem. So, well, our joint solution is, is basically using secrets detection provided by GitGuardian and the whole suite for secrets management, rotation, and access provided by CyberArk to cover um, this whole problem. So, yeah, let's... Um, have a look at um, why this integration is, is very interesting. Um, well, j just a quick word about the fact that it covers both uh, historical scanning, uh, as we are doing it in, in, in VCS, uh, and now also in other uh, data sources like Slack and, and Jira, and, and you can scan your historical um, data with, with GitGuardian, and, and this is covered by this integration. But you also have uh, uh, something that is very important is your 
continuous monitoring and being able to to be alerted very quickly when a secret leaks and to and to take the correct actions in your secret manager to either rotate the key or um, uh, flag it as as requiring a, a manual inspection, for instance. So yeah, now let's have a look at some use cases uh, that we've been uh, working on. So. If you if you have a look also at, at how a developer um, needs to remediate a, an incident, you have uh, uh, different steps that the, the developers has to go through, and um, uh, this is one thing that Git Garden offers um, with some custom remediation workflow where you can specify the different steps that your user will have to to go through to fully remediate the incident, and of course this can include like vaulting your secret if it was not in, in your vault already, or rotating the secrets, uh, which is the, the ultimate step that you want to, to take to actually close the incident. If you go to the next slide, please, Mac. So yeah, there, there we go. Um, th these are the use cases that we, that we have been working on uh, together with uh, uh, David at, at CyberArk. So there are mainly two use cases. The first one is on the left, and then the second one is on the right with, let's say, two sub-use cases. So the first use case on, on the left is basically being able to audit and verify whether any of the, of the secrets that you have in your vault um, have leaked publicly because of a human error. And, and this is basically leveraging both CyberArk's vault and GitGuardian's Has My Secret Leaked service to check whether there is a match between a secret that is in, in the vault and uh, a secret that is in our database of public leaks. Uh, so that's a, a very powerful way for uh, our users to periodically check whether um, their vaulted secrets have been exposed because of a human error. Um, on the other hand, another use case we've been working on is um, tackling secrets detected in your internal sources. So uh, let's say that GitGuardian detects a secret in your source code, for instance. And um, well, in, in such a case, there are actually two situations. So situation A, the secret is not in your CyberArk vault already. And this means that the secret you used is somehow a rogue secret for your vault. And it would be very good if you could uh, flag it and, and maybe also um, store it already in your vault so you are ready to to ha have it in your vault, yeah, it would be much more secure. So that's the, the first situation. But situation B, the secret can also be already in your vault. And that's an issue. It means that a, a human error has exposed a secret that was vaulted. And in that case, you want to flag this secret in your CyberArk vault as uh, needing to, to be rotated. And, and yeah, that's the, the second situation uh, we worked on. So yeah, that, that's the, the use cases we've been working on. I, I'll just try to, um, yeah, so sorry. The next slide is for you, David, I think, if you want to go a bit deeper into how this works. Yeah, that's uh, exactly right. So next, uh, or I, I know we have a lot of technical people here joining us and that people want to understand the mechanic, the mechanisms of how everything works. So uh, we're lucky that we are we have David with us from CyberArk that's going to explain uh, a little bit about how the, the inner workings of this integration actually functions and how we can actually achieve the results that we've just been talking about. So David, I'll, I'll leave it over to you. Awesome. <clears throat> yeah, so my name is David Heisel and I'm a global solution strategy architect over at uh, CyberArk. And um, <clears throat> so uh, we have an integration that <clears throat> operates between the has my secret leak service and also the git guardian service um, on this slide uh, the flow with the has my secret leak service uh, there are essentially two two uh, separate parts one is say <clears throat> say you have a vault and you have a safe with some secrets in it and you want to be able to s scan those secrets uh, or post those secrets to the has my secret leak uh, service. So what you do from there is you, we have a tool that will load your secrets by uh, creating the hashes of your secrets and then storing the hashes in the integration database. 
So uh, you can see there that there's the steps there. So th this enables the next step, which will actually post uh, batch all of your hashes up to the uh, has my secret leaked service. And then it performs its uh, matching algorithm there. And if there are any matches in the HMSL service, it'll return those. And then the integration will uh, cause the vault, well, it'll notify the vault, hey, please rotate this particular credential. <clears throat> So that, that's the general flow of the has my secret leaked uh, part of the integration. Uh, go to the next slide, please. And for for the other use case that uh, Pierre was describing, uh, so you have the Git Guardian scanning workflow. So I'm a developer. You know, I committed a secret. Um, Git Guardian scans for it and says, "Hey, I found something," and it creates an incident. And when it creates this incident, it also triggers a webhook. And this webhook has that, that uh, HMSL hash in it. Uh, HMSL means the uh, has my secret leaked. So I'm going to say HMSL is just easier to say. So the, the payload has that HMSL secret in it. And <laughs> it passes that to the integration. And the integration then says, oh, uh, do I have this stored or not? If it has it stored in there, then we know that it's a, a secret that we have access to. And so we tell the vault, go ahead and rotate this credential. Uh, if on the other hand, uh, this is an unvaulted credential, it will actually create a, an account in into your pending safe. So you have to have this set up to have a, a pending safe. And then it will add, add the uh, uh, an entry into your pending safe. Now it doesn't store the actual credential because we don't have access to the actual credentials. But what it does enable you to do is it'll have a link back to that Git Guardian incident so that you can then go go over there and review like where where it is in your code that you um, entered in that particular secret. And then when you do the remediation, you'll all, you'll already have an entry in your safe where you can just update your code to grab it from the safe instead of hard coding it. And so that's how the the integration works. So, you know, first, this is the first, and, and the integration is really the first step to bridging the gap between secret detection and remediation. Uh, so the secrets from your vault, they can be checked against the HMSL. And whenever Git Guardian detects a secret in your code, it can notify the privileged cloud vault to create and, and, and or rotate uh, those leaked secrets. So uh, thank you and stay secure. <laughs> thanks, thanks, David. We have a, a, a demo that we can provide to in, in just a minute, but I wanted to, um, to kind of make sure that we all understand the integration and, and, and how it all works, because there's, there's, there's a lot of moving parts. And there's a lot of moving parts because uh, we're dealing with really some of the most sensitive data that you can deal with, which is secrets. But um, going back to the, the beginning, when Daniel was talking about how developers accidentally leak keys on secrets and, and how prolific that is, if I'm a developer, working for an organization that uses CyberArk um, as a vault, uh, uses the CyberArk's vault to store my secrets, and I leak a credential on GitHub. Does, is this able to find together, are the, are the tools able to find if the secret has leaked and then rotate that secret so it's no longer, so it's, it's, it's no longer a risk out there in, in the wild? Is that essentially what the integration boils down to? Uh, okay, so there's the assumption that your your GitHub repo is connected to Git Guardian, and that you're running this integration service, and you you've created a, a pending safe, uh, yes. and then if the secret that you have is checked in, and uh, it will actually be passed as a, that, so it'll be hashed, and that hash will be passed to the integration. Yeah, so if you have something that's already in your safe that has the same hash, then the you know then through the, uh, you know because it's the same hash, same password, and so then yes, it can it can detect and it will uh, tell the vault to rotate that password. We're we're getting a lot of questions in the chat that I'm just kind of monitoring here, and I and I think some people are kind of concerned about uh, the storage of these of these secrets. So Pierre, this is really a question uh, for you. Um, 
there too is, is I, I'm just going to come out here and say the fundamental question that I think a lot of people like are kind of wondering, uh, and is this safe? Is it safe to have these secrets that stored, uh, you know, with has my secret lead uh, from GitHub? How 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 does uh, does that work? And Pierre, I'll I'll leave that to you to answer. Yeah. So. Um... Just a quick word about has my secret leaked. So behind the scene, there's a, a, a protocol that is um, quite safe and, and, and well thought protocol. So you only are sharing a small portion of the hash of your secret because yeah, the, the hash of your secret cannot be reversed, but still sharing the full hash of your secret would be an issue. So you're only sharing a small portion of the hash of your secret. And 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 then this becomes safe because uh, Git Guardian and has my secret leaked has no way to going back uh, to, to, to going back to your original hash or even original secret. So um, yeah, that's the first part of my uh, answer. And, and I think you can uh, watch the replay of the webinar we had uh, a month ago or two months ago about has my secret leaked, about the protocol behind the scene. And then when it comes to Git Guardian, um, yeah, so the secrets we we detect are stored encrypted, uh, of course, and we have no ways to to decrypt it uh, except you as the as the user. So yeah. Um, but yeah, I really encourage you to have a look at the has my secret leaked protocol because it's quite interesting to see how we are dealing with the hashes uh, that David talked about, the prefixes of the hash, how we reconciliate this with our database. Right. Uh, really interesting, and, and I encourage everyone to watch that. Other, uh, if you're interested in the mechanisms of how has my secret leaked worked, uh, to watch that. Now, what we do have now is a little bit of a demo. Now, it's always difficult to demo backend uh, backend systems here, uh, which is essentially what what this is. But David has put together a, a, a great demo for us. But I will let you all know that the demo gods were not shining a light on us uh, this morning. Uh, and so we weren't able to, to share screens directly from, uh, from the other one. So we have a recording of the demo. But David, um, what I would like is we're not going to be able to get the sound from, from that recording. So I'm going to share the recording. And if you could talk through what's happening in the demo, um, that would be that would be great. So in one second, I'm just going to share a new screen here. And you can skip to about six minutes and 45 seconds in because the first... Um, I'm already there. I'm with you. <laughs> okay. But, yeah. but uh, can everyone see my... Can you see my screen? Is that coming up? Uh... Yeah, I can see that. Okay, great. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, and click on this, and you can explain the magic that's going on. So uh, we're looking at a sandbox repo, and this is where I'm showing that um, there are no secrets. I haven't committed any secrets into the repo. Then, yeah, so go through there. Hey, this is a great repo. It's a very short function, you know, just for demo purposes. This is the Git Guardian dashboard. <clears throat> I reloaded the page so we can see that there are clearly no, no incidents. And this is a view of the vault and the safe that I have. And we re refresh it to make sure that we only have the one demo user in there. And I manually entered that one uh, specifically so that I, we can do the uh, HMSL uh, demo. So we're going to go uh, trying to recall exactly on this one. OK, so we take a quick look at the details. Too bad the sound's not on, on this one. <laughs> Ah, okay. So time for a little bit of terminal uh, demo parts here. Again, this is a backend service. So I just want to show that here the database is empty, right? So th there's no actual, uh, you know, trying to do a straw man and put some fake data in there. No, no, no. Uh, so here I'm going to run, I'm going to uh, run a script that will actually put one of the uh, test HMSL uh, tokens into, or I'm sorry, first thing we have to do, if you remember back on the slide, is we have to load the integration with the entries 
from our vault and safe. So this is a tool that's available to do that. And we should be going back to the database here and it should, should show that we have, uh, I believe three. So there we go. So we have, we've loaded three, uh, secrets or hashes rather hashes, uh, from two different, um, safes. Now that's because my user has access to those two safes. And I was simply pointing out there that the uh, brimstone three, that bottom in record in the table was for the, <clears throat> for that particular user. And so now we've performed the load hashes. Now we're going to run the finding of the leaked hash. And that was the, uh, this, uh, the script I was showing before, I, I believe it called curl put HMSL. So this is basically calling the endpoint to load the, uh, that HMSL demo slash test token into the integration database so that when we do eventually call the, uh, send hashes to HMSL endpoint, it will have that, that hash available. And it's not that one. It's the second one. It's the five zero eight two seven. That's the demo hash that will actually return some matches from the HMSL service. So let's see. Yep. And we can see that we added that one onto there. That's the fourth entry there. And there it is, the 50827. So the hash was added. And we've associated it to that demo user. So when we run the sending of the hashes up to HMSL and we return as a we'll get that as a matched credential. And then it will attempt to rotate that credential. Now, because this is this is just a, a, a demo token, there's no actual resources that are tied to the token, uh, we will see that it was um, failed to change the password because the, uh, the the automatic management of those passwords it's been it's been disabled, right? Again, because there's no reads there's no resources there that are associated to that particular token. We just wanted to view that hey, we did get a match and we did try to rotate that password. And so you can see there on the bottom one, there's the hash that was returned. So this is this is actual payload, uh, slightly augmented from the HMSL service. The HMSL service only returns a location equals, uh, all the stuff before location equals, that's uh, augmented from the integration. Uh, in, just in case there are errors like, oh, by the way, you've turned off your automatic management it's going to show those types of messages in, in there. Uh, side note, the automatic management is part of the uh, vault service. So that was the HMSL demo workflow. And here we're going to, again, go through, <clears throat> I'm sorry, go back to the terminal. And we're gonna, we're gonna show, um, the Git Guardian flow, and so here we, you know, we double check. All right, so this is the, this is your code, no secrets in it, which is awesome. And then we're going to simulate using my simulation script, checking in a really cool looking, uh, awesome high Shannon entropy token. And basically we're gonna replace the secret uh, is assigned from a, an environment variable. We're gonna replace that with secret colon equals some big long string of, of random characters. And then we're gonna commit it, we're gonna push it. And you know, here it is in my this is in my GitHub sandbox. So I'm pretty sure I do a refresh on this so we can see what's going on. Lovely, lovely code, come on. This video going? What happened? I don't see it anymore. Hello? Mac? Uh, 
Can you hear us? Mac? Uh-oh. Uh, it looks like his, uh, his frozen. image is frozen. There we go. Mac, we lost uh, the video there. Yeah. Um, oh. So, uh, let's see. Right there. Yep. Okay. That's good. So uh, we did refresh. Now we can clearly see that there's a you know a big string that could potentially be some sort of a secret that was accidentally committed, uh, matching the pattern in the uh, you know, well-documented Git Guardian patterns of uh, high entropy secrets or generic high entropy secrets. And clearly we created that incident. And so it's happening in the background there uh, in the, uh, yeah, we so we verify here, we did indeed check it in. So the Git Guardian uh, webhook is configured to obviously point to the uh, integration. And the webhook had, has posted and processed it as something that that uh, doesn't exist yet. Uh-oh. I'm going in the wrong direction here. Oh. Uh, so, <clears throat> sorry, it's a uh, part of the flow where it's adding the credential. I'm just going back to show in, in the, in the big flow that, all right, so it's a new credential. We should now see it in our safe and we do the refresh and we see there it is. Indeed, it was added and we can, we can take a look at the details and we'll see the, uh, the address, uh, well, the, the address part in, in this particular example shows it goes to incident slash blah, 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 077. And when we go back to the Git Guardian dashboard, we can we can clearly see that it was a 077 that, was, uh, that this was created from. So when, uh, I believe that, uh, we have one last part. <clears throat> so I basically run it, run the um, commit, uh, simulate the commit push again. And so what happens there is this is a bump the occurrence count of the old, old password, uh, but it also creates a new entry in uh, the vault and in my safe, my, this is my, this is my pending safe. And it takes, it takes a minute. Well, it takes under a minute, but, uh, it didn't, uh, pop up as instantaneously as I wanted, but there it is. So the bottom one is the 077. That was the one that did exist. And then the new one, that's the one with the new secret. Uh, we can see that it's, uh, this big, long, blah, 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 new. And then I refresh the page and I see that it is indeed a new secret. And then we will see that we do indeed have an, another entry into our vault. So we, we've vaulted, and these are, put again, put into a pending safe. So it is, it is up to the developer to go into, into here. And you know, in a remediation, you can go back to the dashboard, you can figure out where, where that particular offending piece of code is, you can fix the code. And then because you've already got it in a safe, you just have to, you should be able to just uh, copy paste some piece of uh, code somewhere that says grab it from the safe or better yet, grab it from, from Conjure, which is our uh, a, a separate technology that helps with um, automating these things. And so here I'm just sharing, you know, because the CPM password is disabled, uh, that's the automation. So it wasn't actually rotated, but that, that CPM plugin would actually rotate that that password that was leaked and i believe that concludes the demo so um thank you that just let me just stop sharing my screen it, it is remarkably hard to be able to speak to a video and do that so i i, I thank you we had some technical issues where we couldn't share the screens which yeah. is why we had to do it that way but um the, the the key premise of that i think is really exciting and i'm sure that uh, people, people get it and the, the power and added uh, scalability, but also security that having these two platforms integrated, the platform that manages the secrets and the platform that finds the secrets, it's an obvious integration, but it's remarkably difficult to do when we're dealing with such sensitive information. 
So thank you, David. Um, what I'm going to do now is uh, uh, switch over to ask uh, to, to look at maybe some questions that the audiences have. We've had lots of questions. I know the um, I know the, the the it's been very busy, but we'll try and find um, uh, something here. Daniel Knight has said, "What if what if a secret is archived? For example, if a secret is archived <laughs> on the Internet Archive, how is that handled?" So. In this case, there's lots of services that capture that capture uh, that capture secrets. So, what if what if the secret is is archived somewhere? The honest answer, da Daniel, in in this, if a secret makes its way out into public sphere, um, it needs to be rotated. It's really the only solution for it. And what you've said is exactly why. So what if it's archived anywhere? These services aren't designed. What we're not doing is we're not removing it from GitHub. Um, we're not clearing the internet of, of all evidence of your mistake. What we're doing is we're, we're, we're making sure that that secret doesn't have access to it by alerting you and then also by where possible uh, being able to automatically rotate that if you're using CyberArk, which is why that's so powerful um, to do it. Does, I don't know if anyone has anything to add uh, to that, Daniel or David. I'm good. I think that covers it. Um, and let me just look through. Uh, there is so many questions to to kind of go for. If a secret is being deleted from public repo, is it still a risk? What should be the remediation steps, Daniel? I think you probably would be able to take this. It's on a similar, similar, similar line to what we just talked about. Yeah, I mean, again, it goes back to if anything's touched the public internet at any point, it has to be revoked and rotated. That's the only option. Um, and like the example there is that even if you realize, hey, I accidentally committed this publicly, I should remove it. We have been monitoring this, and we have all these secrets that have been committed publicly, stockpiled going back years. If we're doing it. Anyone else can do it via the API, and often it's less well-intentioned actors doing the same. So, Mac, I know you've done tests in the past. You can find this on our YouTube of you intentionally leaking a secret on public GitHub, and it's being accessed by like half a dozen different IPs within two minutes. So as yes. soon as it's out there, you have to cut access, revoke, and rotate it, and that's the only solution. So we have one here from, from Darren, and Darren says, uh, if I understand correctly, if you're using CyberArk and a knowing key is shared, it will automatically rotate that key if this key is used across the team and the whole team is using CyberArk and they will have access to the newly rotated key. There's a few things in there and you're missing the Gagalian component, but David, um, do you want to uh, tackle Darren's question into, in, into this and if, if that's the correct, the correct kind of idea? Sure. Um, yeah, give me one second to parse this. Uh, so, if some, if a known key is shared, uh, automatically rotate the key. Uh, will, will all ha so will the team have access to the newly rotated key? Uh, insofar as the team has access to the vault, if they have access to the vault, then they'll have access to the key. Yeah. So that's uh, yeah. So in essence, Darren, you you are you are correct in, in understanding and, and how that and how that works and the, the, how it's set up as well. And this is for the scenario of uh, a key being leaked publicly on on GitHub. And I'm just going to check the the uh, the chat too. If there's any more questions, please get them in now whilst I'm uh, looking through them. But I think the team, I'm just trying to find, but I think the team has mostly covered uh, everything. This is just the first part uh, of, of this integration. We wanted to announce and show everyone what we're doing. But what you can expect is there's going to be a lot more information and content around about how this all fits together and, and what it works. And we're going to be working on that um, together. So uh, there will be more to come. Today is just a first taste and to let you all know about the incredible things we're doing with the incredible CyberArk team, the best secret detection on the planet with the best identity access on the planet. It's, it's a, it's a, it's a, that concludes. 
I lost internet at like the perfect time, but that concludes <laughs> our, our webinar. So thank you all for, for tuning in. Um, we look forward to seeing you on the next webinars that we have coming up. And we look forward to be able to share much more with you about what we're doing at CyberArk. Uh, I want to thank Pierre, uh, David, Jody, and Daniel for being with me. Uh, we had some technical issues, but do you know what? We pulled through, and uh, I'm pleased we'll be able to do this and, and share it with you. So thanks, everyone, for tuning in. Thank you, everyone, for being here, and we'll see you on the next one. Ha, ha, ha.